Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And our message today is entitled, One Opportunity. Video game players will easily identify with starting out their games with three lives and, and then the opportunity to get in several more. At least that's how it used to be. But in real life, we have one opportunity to, to get it right. And I'm, I'm going to develop that truism uh, a little more. And that, that's a concept that, that, that most people just take for granted. But we're going to develop that in this message. One opportunity. So for our scripture, I want to read just a portion of one verse. It's found in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And it says, It is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. It's short but powerful. It hits home. It's appointed unto man once to die. We don't have multiple lives. We don't get multiple opportunities to get it right. And I realize, though, that there's uh, lots of, of religions out there that teach different concepts of reincarnation, where at death, the body dies, but the soul continues to live. And it comes back in different forms, or maybe in some type of animal, like maybe a, a cow or a cockroach. It all depends on, on the kind of life that you lived previously. And then the soul continues this life and death cycle until it has enough merit that they, they reach perfection and then is united with the one the ultimate being. But God, God the creator said from the very beginning that we are all destined to die one time and there is no coming back but only judgment. The Hebrew writer of the verse that we just read was probably quoting from Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. God said, by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. God does not give us any indication or any inclination or even a slight suggestion that there are going to be multiple lives. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're all destined to die the one time. We have one life. We have one opportunity. As they say, no one gets out alive. At least not for those who, who have gone on ahead of the return of Christ. If, if you are those who have remained, then you made it. But for everyone else, we only look forward to one death, one opportunity. There's not multiple opportunities. So I want you to really, really understand that. I, I, I can't stress it enough that we have one shot at getting this right, one opportunity to get all of our ducks in a row, so to speak. And the time, the time nowadays is, is just flying by so quickly that it seems that that the days are just morphing into the next and that one into the next one and that into the next one until it just becomes just a blur. Years gone by, you could mark days by, by things that you did or something that, that you said or so, something that happened. But these days are so different. It's, you can't hardly tell one, one day from the other day. You, you're like... Was that yesterday or, or was that last week? I, I can't remember. It's just flying by so quickly. It's hard to tell one day from another. I remember when I was a child, to me, Christmas came every two years. And nowadays, it seems like Christmas comes every six months. We can hardly put the Christmas decorations away when we're hauling them out again. I remember when I was in, in grade school, we, we had two months vacation, summer vacation. And that, to me, that, that took forever. By the time we went back to school in September, I was pretty much ready to go back to school because to me it seemed so long. 
These days it's just two blinks and you're, you're back in school. The summer is over. We're preparing for, for the fall and the winter. Time is flying by. And it's easy to, to, to keep putting it off and putting it off. Salvation. Keep putting off salvation. Keep putting God off. And oops, you're out of time. The scripture says that today is the day of repentance. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is promised to no man or no woman or no child for that matter. Today is that day. That's why it's so extremely important that you understand or that you realize or, or, or you, you, you probably realize it, but we got to take it into account and we got to live by it that we have this one opportunity to get it right. And I cannot stress it enough. I, I, I know it, it's, you're, you're like, hey, Brother Kenny, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Why, why are you so passionate about that? It makes no difference whether we have one chance or we have a million chances, right? It's all the same. We're, we're all going to the same place, aren't we? Wrong. Wrong. You're dead wrong. If that's your concept, you're dead wrong. There's only two places where we will spend eternity. One's in heaven or hell, the lake of fire. There's no purgatory. There's no nirvana. There's no nothingness. You will exist somewhere forever and ever. And that is one of those two places, either heaven or hell. This, this place called the lake of fire. I, I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. This is what it says. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it from his presence, earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. I'm telling you, we only have one chance. We only had one opportunity, and we better be well informed and we better be ready to make a definite choice. And not just a definite choice, but the correct choice, the right choice. Because we have that one opportunity. The lake of fire is a place where there is no peace, no joy, no light. Just pure darkness. Darkness that can be felt. The flames are never extinguished. They burn forever and ever. And ever. There will be loud screaming of agony. There's no peace there, only regret. There's thirst, there's burning. And those that go there will never die and get out of it. They'll never die and just, it's all over. They will be there experiencing that forever and ever. They will live forever in great suffering and in great anguish, all because they refused to get it right. They refused to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. This is the lot of those who do not get it right. The, this is the lot for those who refuse to accept Jesus. It's a terrible place. You wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. Heaven, though, on the other hand, but let me just clear something up real quick. It's not really heaven that we're going to spend eternity. It's on the new earth. We'll be living on, uh, on earth for all eternity and not actually 
in heaven, but on earth. And, and God himself has got to come down on earth and he's got to dwell there with us. And we'll be living there. There's going to be peace and joy and happiness. It's, it's, a, it's a time when, when the Lord himself is going to wipe away every tear. There are going to be no more sorrow, no more fear, no more anger, no more hate, no more lack, no more hunger or thirst, no more heartaches, no more getting ripped off, no more working for peanuts. There will be more than enough, more than enough of everything. There will be no lack. And Jesus himself will be there. He will be there as our God. He'll be there as our Savior. He'll be there as our brother. He'll be there as our joint heir. He'll be there as our friend. We will walk and talk with Jesus. We'll walk and talk with all the saints, the prophets of the Old Testament, the prophets of the New Testament, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses, Joshua, Daniel, King David, Peter, James, John, Paul. They'll all be there and we'll be able to talk with them. We'll be able to be friends with them. And we'll all live together with Jesus himself, the one who paid the ultimate price for us, the one who died to give us life. And they'll all be there because they all got it right. Look at Paul's uh, admonition to, to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 through 14, it says, But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you are called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's instruction to Timothy is to take hold of the eternal life to which you are called and about which you have made the good confession. Paul understood that they only had the one opportunity to get it right. One opportunity to build up treasure in heaven that lasts for all eternity. People work so hard here on earth building up treasure, treasure and wealth that will not, not last forever. It will fail. And everyone that, that, that does that, they, they will loot. Somebody else is going to get that, um, that treasure that they're building up now because days is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. And then whose wealth will that be? The only wealth that will last is the wealth that you send on ahead. Look, Jesus warns us to not work for wealth here, the wealth that fades here, but build up true treasure where in eternity where it's, it's safe. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, if your heart is there, that's where you're going to be working towards. That's what you're going to be building up. You are going to be attached to where your heart is. So if your heart is attached there, you're going to be working hard for there. So when you build up treasure in heaven, it lasts forever. So don't waste your time working for fool's gold. The only thing you will take into eternity is what you send on ahead. If you send nothing on ahead, then you will have nothing. Nothing added to nothing is still nothing. But I'm sure you'll have something in eternity. Even if, if you accepted Christ on your deathbed, I'm sure he will have something there for you. But you won't have as much as you could have. You could have tons of treasure. You just got to work for it. Nothing is free. So we need to work now. We need to build up our treasure so don't miss out on the best and most profitable investment of 
all times. There's never been an investment as profitable as this. It's your eternity. Invest in your eternity. Paul understood the gravity and the seriousness of the situation when he told the Corinthian church that he worked harder than the other super apostles. He was imprisoned more. He had more hardships than the other apostles. He was building up lasting treasure. He was super focused. Paul was sure of what he had done. He did not waste his time with useless things, things that didn't count. He put all of that to the side. He did not get distracted with the temporal. He was focused on true wealth. He was hyper-focused on the eternal. Look at what he wrote. He wrote some of the greatest last words ever spoken or ever written in his letter to, to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Imagine that, that to me, those words are so powerful. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearance. Paul was sure he had run his race successfully. He had finished the course completely. There was nothing he had left undone. He had no regrets. Now, I realize that people, or, or pretty much everyone, has regrets. Things they wish they had done. Things they wish they hadn't done. But Paul didn't have regrets. Well, not at least not, not after he accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. He was laser focused on what God had called him to do. And he had done everything Everything. He had all his T's crossed. He had all his I's dotted. He had all his ducks aligned. He had everything done completely. He left nothing out. And he let nothing distract him. He said, I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. He had one thing on his mind. And that was doing God's will. Paul did not consider salvation to be a one-time thing and done. It's all over now. It's finished. I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now I'm all over. All I got to do is to cruise on in. Just slide on in. No, no, he didn't. He was super focused. He understood that it took a lifetime to build up treasure. He understood that it took a lifetime because he had to win souls. Not just him. He, he needed to take souls with him. He needed to win the world. And this is what they said about it. They said that, that, that he turned the whole world upside down. And he said, he come here now. He's going to do the same thing here. That's what they accused them of. Every day we wake up and we plug away to attain that which we were apprehended by Christ Jesus to apprehend. We got to do his will. This is eternal life. And we need to bring others with us, especially our family members, our brothers, our sisters, our siblings, our, 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 um, our children, our grandchildren. And in some, some cases, our parents, we, we, our grandparents, we got to bring others. We got to bring our family members, our cousins, and their families. In the Old Testament, God said several times, and I quote, none shall appear before me empty handed. Every time God talked about the, the, the feasts that were to be kept, he mentioned it. None shall appear before me empty-handed. Do you suppose that that was written only for those feasts, those feasts that were only a shadow of things to come? They were not the real thing. They were only the shadow of the real thing. I say, no, it was written about soul winning as well. Do not stand, when you come before me, do not stand empty-handed. You should be bringing souls with you because souls are the most important thing 
in the whole world that was ever created is your soul. You, you are so, so, so valuable that the Lord God himself got off of his throne and came down and died to purchase your soul. That where he is, there you shall be also. You were bought at a price, a very, very high price. So when we stand for, before God, we must have something to show for our, our labor. Whether our labor was in prayer or our witness or, or our soul winning, we must have something to show. We must not stand before the God of the feast. Empty, empty handed because he's the God of the harvest as well and if you're not harvesting his harvest field you're not doing his will we gotta harvest Jesus said look the fields are white on the harvest the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few because we get saved and we go into hibernation we go in and we, 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 we just do not do what it is we're supposed to do. Sometimes people don't even realize that we're Christians. We are not saved to go into hibernation. We are saved for good works, for soul winning. We are saved to be a blessing to others. It's not about us. It's about pleasing God. It's about being a blessing to somebody else to win that lost soul for the Lord Jesus. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 through 16 says, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upright call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Oh, but Brother Kenny, it is so difficult to live that kind of life, to live such a, a constantly holy life. Nobody. Paul had a difference of opinion. He said there are examples out there, examples that can encourage you to do even better. To, to, to hold on to that which we have been called to. He said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, he said, Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. You see, when you see other Christians trying to be holy, trying to live right, shunning evil, shunning the wicked, shunning the, 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 the nasty stuff, and trying to make a difference in the, in the world, don't roll your eyes and think, oh, holier than thou spirit. No. Let them be an example to you and stop letting Hollywood be your example, be an example to, to, to your household. See, these Christians who are trying to, to shun evil and cling to the good, they're, they're trying to live out that which they're called to live out. You should follow suit. So in closing, I want to remind you that we only have the one opportunity. We have one opportunity to get this right. Remember, it's appointed unto man once to die. After that comes judgment. There are no second chances. There are no, no multiple lives. This is it. So I want to ask you, have you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior? Are you living for him? Are, are, are you living the kind of life that's storing up treasure in heaven? If you said, yes, I am, Brother Kenny. Yes, I am. Well, good for you. And I pray that the Lord will strengthen you daily and con that, that, that you might continue the good fight the good fight of faith. But if you haven't, if you have not, don't wait until it's too late. Today is the day of repentance. Tomorrow is promised to no man. So if you would like to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you can. All you got to do is to pray this prayer from the heart. 
pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to live for you. Thank you that you came and died for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you offer salvation for free. I accept it now. I accept your forgiveness. And I ask you to help me to live for you. Help me to store up treasure in heaven. Help me to win souls. Help me not to be ashamed of the gospel, but to be proud that I'm now a Christian. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, what I would like for you to do is to go and buy yourself a Bible. Or, if you have one, dust it off. Take it up. Begin to read it. And you can start anywhere in, in, in the Bible. Anywhere. Old Testament, Genesis, or in the New Testament, John, wherever. All you have to do is to start. And do not stop. Continue reading it until you've read the whole Bible. Next thing I want you to do is to get yourself a highlighter and highlight those verses that's meaningful to you. Highlight those verses that, that, that are promises, those verses that you claim for yourself. And memorize those verses. Hide those verses away in your heart and believe them. God is faithful to fulfill his word. The scripture says that he watches over his word to fulfill it. So if he made a promise to you, he will fulfill that promise. You just got to pray and believe. It might be tomorrow. It might be sometime later. But he will fulfill the promises that he have made. Next thing I want you to do is to find yourself a Bible-believing church. A church that still believes in holiness, still believes in righteousness. Not one of those progressive churches that anything goes. Find yourself a a Bible, thus saith the Lord, believe in church. A one that believes in holiness and righteousness. And join that church. Be a part of that church. Be discipled in that church. And when the Lord comes back, he find you working, winning souls. He will take you to be with him that where he is, there you shall be also. Now, here's the thing. I believe that there's coming a day when Scripture will be taken away from us and we will not be allowed to have Bibles openly. They will be illegal. And the only Scripture you'll, you'll have is the one that you have memorized, the one that you have written, hidden away in your heart. So it's so important that we memorize Scripture, that we can call on it in our time of distress. Jesus, when, when he was tempted... He said, it is written, because he hid the word away in his heart. He had to learn it. He had to memorize it. So, join the church, get a Bible, highlight the Bible, read it every single day. Pray, believe, win souls. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.